You know, I'm going to read an opinion piece here on, uh, from NBC News on who they think the winners and losers were of the debate. But the real losers are all of us. Uh, our choices are getting so slim and so desolate and so far out there and so childlike. When I was watching the debate, at the end of it, I thought, you know, if I was a candidate for the presidency, I would have looked at every single one of the candidates in earnest, and I would have told them, you have forgotten what it means to be in politics. You have forgotten what it means to have policies that benefit the American people, and you are focused on attacking each other. And you're not serving the American people. You are only self-serving, and you are acting like children. And if I could have, I would have walked off the debate stage, but my honor would have kept me there to answer whatever BS, dumb, crappy questions get set forth and listen to all of them try to tear each other down and call each other names and you said this and you said that and I'm surprised they didn't stick their tongues out at each other and go like that. But let's read this. Who won the Democratic debate in Las Vegas? Analysis. Here's who went scorched earth and who may struggle to salvage their presidential hopes for from the ashes. Uh, well, Biden is going to have to be a phoenix and resurrect himself from the ashes. Bloomberg was attacked pretty steadily. Bernie had a nice little spat with uh, Buddha Judge. Okay. Hmm. Winners? Not one of them. Not a single one of them. <sighs> Mike Bloomberg became a pinata and Elizabeth Warren resurrected her feisty side. The Democratic candidates formed a circular firing squad Wednesday night with arrows flying in all directions and fights breaking out among a seemingly infinite, infinite permutation of candidates on matters from health care policy to lewd comments about women. Sorry, I might be getting a little bit sick here. The debate was not only Bloomberg's first time on a presidential debate stage. It was also the first night of his surging 2020 campaign that wasn't choreographed. His surging 2020 campaign, yes. It's surging based upon the backs of just over $443 million. That's what his campaign is surging upon. The result... He faced direct criticism from rivals he has bested in recent polls. It was the most contentious evening of the nine face-offs so far, coming three days before the candidates faced the most diverse voting electorate yet in their quest to make Donald Trump a one-term president. <sighs> but in the meantime, they are attacking themselves and they are dividing the Democratic Party and they are making themselves look like fools. Just once, I would have loved for someone to have gone to a personal attack and for them to have ignored it and gone straight to policy. And rather than pointing out, well, your policy sucks, your policy sucks, no. I want to see a debate where they point internally saying, here's why my policy will work. Here is what I believe will advance X. Make X better. Make X more affordable. Do X for the American people. But we don't get that nowadays. It's a little bit like a presidential version of Survivor, former Senator Claire McCaskill said on MSNBC after the debate. <laughs> yeah. The problem with that is Survivor isn't really about who is the best Survivor. Survivor is about who is the most popular. In fact, who's the best survivor more often than not gets voted off the island early, don't they? Here's a look at who was the most aggressive, who took the toughest punches. Warren was the most aggressive, I think. Buddha Judge was pretty aggressive. He did jump in there. He had some pretty good quips. Um, but as far as like real, like, here's what my policy has to offer the American people... That used to be what the presidential and candidate debates used to be like, but I guess not anymore. And who missed their marks over the course of the debate, which was hosted by NBC News, MSNBC, Telemundo, and the Nevada Independent? Bloomberg. 
It was the billionaire entrepreneur's first time on the debate stage, and it showed. It really did. It showed. It showed. And his rivals made the most of it. He was slammed on everything from his record on stop and frisk to the millions he's sinking into his campaign. Bloomberg kept his composure standing stone-faced. I don't, I, I, I don't believe that was keeping his composure. It made him look like he, he was just shocked. Barely smiling, but he seemed unprepared for an entirely predictable series of attacks. And anybody going into this debate late like this should have predicted that everybody else was looking at it like, well, you snuck in. They changed the rules for you. They said they wouldn't change the rules and that you had to have a certain number of uh, delegates in order to be qualified for the debate, but, well, they just slid you right in. Oh, wait, what was that? You donated $300,000 to them? Oh, well, that explains everything, doesn't it? Follow the money. Follow the money. He said he's embarrassed about the stop-and-frisk strategy pol uh, police pursued when he was mayor of New York under his d direction. I've sat, I've apologized, I've asked for forgiveness. Pressed on... <laughs> That was the wrong way to go, man. Asked and begged. No, he didn't say he begged. I've apologized and I've asked for forgiveness. Just simply state you, you don't agree with it. Times change. I don't know, something of that effect, but not this. Not this. We don't want a weak president. Because remember, all this is depending on... All, uh, who are president is depends on all this. How they act now is how they're going to act when they're president. Do we want a president that's going to apologize and ask for forgiveness everywhere? Or do we want a president that points out facts and says, okay, look, uh, at the time this was the policy. This is why we enacted it. Here's the good things it did. Here's the bad things it did. Uh, as time went on, we saw that it was uh, doing things that we didn't intend for it to do. And now I'm saying that it was perhaps uh, implemented wrong, it was bad, it was awful, whatever, but come on, don't actually ask for forgiveness. You gotta be strong. It's the world stage, remember? This is someone that we're gonna put up against Putin, who definitely does have a strong demeanor. Pressed on why he hasn't re released his tax returns, he said, it just takes a long time because of his extensive business dealings and I can't just go to TurboTax. <laughs> yes, because none of the candidates can just go to TurboTax because all of them are above and beyond what the normal average American is. Money in politics. So now politics has become money. You know, live by, die by. Live by money, die by money. Politicize, politicize by money. I don't know. Money and politics. But remember, money is free speech. How much free speech do I have in my pocket right now? I've got um, I've got one and a half free speech. What do you got? One and a half free speech. That's maybe that's what we should call money now. Hey, how much is it? Uh five free speech. His low point came when he refused Warren's demands to release uh, women he has worked with from non-disclosure agreements and he was booed for saying we're not going to end these agreements because they were made consensually. Yeah. That doesn't sound good. I mean, regardless of whether it's nefarious or not as a soundbite, Bloomberg, that's not good. Bloomberg pictured himself as a mayor, a manager, a philanthropist. He also, a philanthropist, Okay. He also took a shot at Bernie Sanders, the frontrunner in a recent national poll, calling him unelectable. I don't think there's any chance of the senator being, beating Donald Trump. Later, he added, the best-known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders used to say, we're knocking on the, the millionaires and the billionaires. We're knocking on the millionaires and the billionaires. We're coming after the millionaires and the billionaires. And then he writes a book and he becomes a millionaire. And next thing you know, we're coming after the billionaires. We're coming after the billionaires. Okay, so what happens after the billionaires are gone? Then who are you going to tax? See, that's the problem with socialism. It doesn't think further down the line. Bernie Sanders. Well, he kind of held his own. But he needed to respond quite a bit better to the whole millionaire thing. Sanders entered the debate as a frontrunner for the nomination in Nevada and nationally, and nothing in the debate knocked him off his stride. Bloomberg counterpunched 
uh, Pete Buttigieg lot criticism and a bit of praise. And Joe Biden and Klobacher noted his vote against a 2007 immigration bill. It gave Sanders a space to press his righteous indignation against an economically unequal society. Yes, Sanders, but your society is going to make us economically equal in poredom. That's the problem. Yeah, we'll be economically equal, for sure. But ain't nobody going to be able to get past the ceiling, not without some extraneous, extraneous circumstances going on. He spent much of the debate ripping into Bloomberg repeatedly, calling him part of a ruling elite that has manipulated Washington to establish policies that benefit people like him personally. Yeah, but the same, the same system you're rallying against, Bernie Sanders, is the same system that has made you personally successful. Just saying. Uh, where was he? He alluded to a corrupt political system bought by billionaires like Mike Bloomberg and said it's immoral that Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans when many of them are suffering. Well, what about you, Bernie? What about you, Bernie? You came up from the bottom. You didn't really have much, and then you became a millionaire, and then you couldn't rally against millionaires because you'd be rallying against yourself. So then what? What happens if you become a billionaire? Well, then who are you going to rally against? The ultra, 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 ultra rich. Billionaire doesn't count. Now you got to be a multi-billionaire. Okay. All right. All right. You see how the rules change and the goalpost changes as time goes on and his position changes? As he gets richer... There's less and less people that he can go after because now he's becoming the same people. And socialism does the same thing. You're going to tax the rich at 98%, are you? You're going to tax the rich at 98% until they're no longer rich because you've taxed them at 98%. And then who are you going to tax at 98%? Didn't think that far ahead, did you? Elizabeth Warren. Hmm. Warren, a senator from Massachusetts, dispensed with the... Uh, yeah. Milquitoast Unifer persona that served her poorly. Th yeah, okay. Dude, you couldn't just use regular words in your article, man. Come on, you're trying to appeal to the normal person, please? That served her poorly through Iowa and New Hampshire and revived the fiery progressive warrior more reflective of her authentic self. She lit into Bloomberg over past sexist remarks and non-disclosure agreements with women. And she did push it a little bit. She did say, are you going to uh, release those women from the non-disclosure agreements? And he, uh, he didn't back down. So there's a lot of painting. I mean, Buttigieg did paint Sanders into a corner on his whole condemning the actions of people. And Sanders responded with, well, they're, they're Russian bots. They're Russian bots. Uh, he did kind of give a blanket, anybody who does something in my name. But at that point, he was already painted in a corner. It looks like he was forced to do it. Uh, let's see. She led into Bloomberg with past sexist remarks and not into closure, uh, uh, declaring, America takes a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. She confronted Biden, Buttigieg, and Klobacher as well. Amy and Joe's hearts are in the right place, but we can't be so eager to be liked by Mitch McConnell that we forget how to beat the Republicans. Mayor Pete has been taking money from big donors and changing his positions, so it makes it unclear what he stands for. Warren desperately needed a boost after poor finishes. Yes, she did. Let's go to Joe Biden. Ugh, my mouth is dry. The former vice president, bleeding support nationally after poor showings in Iowa and New Hampshire, sought to correct course with a performance that was, uh, at times, lively. Yeah, but it was a forced lively. It was a fake it till you make it. He went after Bloomberg repeatedly. Everybody went after Bloomberg. Uh, starting with his criticism of the Affordable Care Act after it was passed. Mike called it a disgrace. Biden said he jumped in at a very... Uh, why am I reading this wrong? My mouth is dry. I apologize. Let me restart. He went after Bloomberg repeatedly, starting with his criticism of the Affordable Care Act after it was passed. Mike called it a disgrace, Biden said. He jumped in at various times to remind voters that he's the only one who has actually dealt with foreign leaders and led the charge on major pieces of legislation. And he has a point there. He has a point there, but not a great one. <laughs> Especially if you're going to deal with foreign leaders the same way you deal with people asking you tough questions. You're gonna, are you going to ask Putin to a push-up contest? I'd like to see that. <laughs> are you going to ask, I don't know, let's say you visit the Queen of England. Are you going to call her uh, a, a whore? 
pony nosed horse faced whatever it was liar <laughs> that'll go over well uh, and let me try uh, he faced a yelling protester at the end of the debate and he used his closing statement to go after Sanders for voting against a 2007 bill that would have created a pathway to citizenship for people in the US illegally it's not clear however that Biden did what he needed to do to alter he didn't he failed he failed but a judge did okay ish Buddha judge facing a new test in a more diverse state after strong showings in Iowa and New Hampshire urged Americans not to let Sanders and Bloomberg become the only two choices, saying the senator wants to burn this party down and the billionaire wants to buy this party out. He criticized Sanders over the mammoth cost of his health care plan. Yeah. And he should have pushed it more. He should have really pushed the issue. Taxes, man. How are you going to pay for that, Sanders? Where's the money going to come from? We're going to have to change the infrastructure. But he also repeatedly went after Klobacher, who's cutting into his support among moderates, but is pulling well behind him overall. And it's all about the moderate vote right now. Honestly, right now the moderate vote is the key. My God, there are so many candidates. We're going to skip down to the last one, Amy Klobacher. Klobacher, a senator from Minnesota, impressed at the uh, New, York, New Hampshire debate and finished a better-than-expected third in the primary. But Nevada is another matter, a test of her ability to appeal to a more diverse electorate. Klobacher pressed her message as a prag pragmatist and a doer, but it remains to be seen whether she did anything to boost her poor support among Latino and black voters. I don't believe she's got the black vote. I don't see any indications that show that she's going to get that. Her fieriest moments came when counterpunching against Buttigieg's attacks. You've not been in the area doing that work. You've memorized a bunch of talking points and a bunch of things, she told him. No winners overall. Only losers. And the biggest losers are us. We don't really have a good, strong moderate. We have a couple people that are starting to take moderate talking points because they're starting to realize that moderate talking points are the key, but they're not actual moderates. They don't actually believe in those talking points. And then there's... It's just too, too extreme. It's too extreme. Anyways, that's what I got on this one. I love talking to you guys. If you've made it this far, I greatly appreciate your valuable time. I will see you guys on the next one. I love you guys. You guys are worthwhile. You guys are awesome. And I thank you.